This is a mermaid I drew in 2019 and I still quite like it. This instead is the same mermaid but I drew it back in 2017. So how did I go from this mermaid to this one? Let me talk about 6 things I learned that helped me improve massively in those 2 years. Now, neither of these mermaids are actually recent. Would you like to see how I improved in the last two years and paint a new one for 2021? Let me know in the comments below. Now, let's talk about how I improved my character drawing skills. First of all, I understood what gesture drawing is and why the line of action is so important. I used to just draw randomly my characters, focusing pretty much only on the features, and this will result in very stiff characters. In fact, Look at the difference between the old one and the 2019 sketches. Even if I don't physically start with the line of action, I surely have one in mind now, and the gesture of my characters is way more natural and dynamic. Gesture drawing helps exploring the personality of my character and makes the viewer feeling closer and empathize with it. How did I improve it, you ask? I exercise on it every day for more than a year. This helped me massively in understanding how to give my poses dynamism and learning what I can stretch and pull and what are the compromises I can make with keeping both gesture and anatomy in check. The second thing I wanted to improve was my anatomy knowledge. Human eyes are very sensible in perceiving any anatomy abnormalities, especially on the face and on the ends. So this is definitely one of the first things you want to study. Now, to be honest, I think lately I improved a bit more, but compared to the 2017 one, I can clearly see that a lot of proportions and masses are much more accurate, like the rib cage or the lower neck muscles. The way I studied to improve this were just a couple. First of all, there are some great anatomy books like The Atlas of Human Anatomy for the Artist, for example, that kindly a friend lent to me. Of course, you don't need to memorize every name of bone or muscle, knowing our structure is enough. The other way I improved anatomy knowledge was lots and lots of observational exercises, mainly using pictures, even though the idea would be real life drawing, although I'm a bit lazy for that. So yeah, I think pictures are just enough. One of the things I didn't realize four years ago was that perspective doesn't just apply on architecture or environments, but applies to characters and anatomy as well. This may seem such an obvious statement, but believe it or not, it's something I used to completely ignore when it came to characters. For some reason, I focused all my energies on drawing the anatomy as well as I could, and I completely ignored the fact that to draw it correctly, you need to take perspective into account. So let's look back at my drawing from 2017. Everything in this character is seen from the front, like an orthogonal projection. No wonder it looks flat. Instead, in the 2019 one, I do get the feeling that my character is occupying a 3D space, and that's because this time I actually took into account the perspective. In fact, we can see the lower part of the chin as well as the armpit. We are not seeing them from the front, because the horizon line is lower than those. How did I improve with this? I decided I would always draw starting with a perspective grid. Needless to say, I didn't do it all the time. But even just the handful of times where I did, it has been key in training my eyes and my approach. Now, drawing anatomy in perspective, it's quite a challenge, so I found a way to approach it that made the job a little bit easier. I simplified shapes in geometry first. I showed this process in a previous time lapse. you can find the link to that video somewhere at the top of the screen. This way, I can worry about masses and perspective first, and redefine it into details later. Contrary to what I used to think, the fact that I'm drawing a character doesn't mean it should be standing there or staring back at me. Imagine being someone that is looking at your artwork. That doesn't give much of a clue of what your character is like. It's not really engaging or not appealing, so portraying it in the middle of an action or with an attitude gives so much more information. This doesn't mean you have to settle your character in a scene with a painted background all the time, but just think about his story, his personality, and try to give the observer a hint, like I did in some of these. How did I improve this? Well, I went back to gesture drawing and I imagined stories behind the gesture and this helped me imagining a context in which the poses I drew were so much more dynamic and story driven. So yeah, some more exercise, but don't look at me like that. You knew this was coming. So the next thing is framing. What do I mean by framing? Uh, let's put it this way. 
Your canvas is like your camera. And because it's like a camera, you'll understand that for some better results and to focus on what's important, it's okay to cut some other things out of the frame. In my first mermaid, I tried to fit everything in the image, even the tail, which by the way, fits in with a very weird angle. Clearly that didn't really work out compositionally. In fact, in the second one, having understood those principles, I just didn't even care about the tail. It's just not in the frame and nobody misses it. Now the image works better and I can focus more on the expression of the mermaid and I have other elements to understand what she is and what her personality is like. The key for me to improve this aspect is obviously consuming a lot of visual content like movies, photography or even other artists work. But mostly it's just a mind shift. It's not me filling the canvas of stuff anymore. This stuff is already there. I just need to show it to other people by framing what's important. The last thing I want to talk about is colors. I used to think about colors in a very unstructured way. My way of going was based on intuition and a lot of trial and error. Obviously, I didn't know anything about color theory. And for someone who tries to work with colors every day, that's not really a smart move, isn't it? The results were often confusing without clear focus on my composition and sometimes I ended up with something I liked but I didn't even know why. So I decided to read something about color theory and I discovered picking single colors doesn't make any sense, because one color does only value when related to other colors. If you think about it in real life, it's not like we isolate colors. We can only see colors in relations with others. For example, here you may look at the leaves and the foliage in the scene and see it as green. While in reality, if I use my color picker to pick these colors, it's actually a shade of orange. The orange has a green meaning only because it is a scene where the balance is heavily towards red. But if I isolate it on a white background, what I see is actually a low saturation orange. So taking this knowledge with me, in the new mermaid, I balance my palette a bit better, giving a warm color as an accent color and keeping the rest of the palette towards blue. And I think it gained a nice focus towards the center of the image because of it. So this is it. These are the six things I learned to improve my character drawing in two years. Let me know what is your experience in the comments and if you like this video smash the like button and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.